Mm. Very nice. Looking to paint your kitchen? We're going to paint it with Farrow and Ball. But I've got to show you how to clean it down first. So stay tuned and let's talk about cleaning down a kitchen to hand paint a kitchen, not spraying it, hand painting it with brushes. Hello painters and decorators of the interweb. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Back with, they're always riveting videos, riveting videos. But today I want to talk about um, painting a kitchen and this is hand painting a kitchen. And we want to talk about cleaning it down. Let's talk about the preparation of cleaning the kitchen down. Now, this kitchen behind me was hand painted with farrow and ball five six years ago it was a previously where what do they call them they like a shrink wrapped panel and all like a brush grain over it now it was all in good condition the panels are the panels that have got a floating panel so if you can see there you don't cork up any edges there is a bit of an edge there because it's a moving floating panel now this was all cleaned down properly it had only um far and ball undercoat was the primer stroke undercoat built up finished with modern eggshell two coats now modern eggshells the old far and ball um what do they call it floor paint so that's a rock hard finish now move five six years on it's a working living kitchen we've got cooking fumes we've got cooking smells we've got everything you can associate with a, a living working kitchen so what I'm doing today, I'm going round, I'm just washing it all down. I've got some cleaner, and when I say cleaner, I could have used my, uh, what do they call it, Malapai, Malapai, Malapai cleaner from Ticarilla, but to me, this is quite grubby, and I'm going for the old, <sighs> can't beat a bit of flash, kitchen cleaner, kitchen cleaner flash, and I've got a, a tub of clean water and a sponge. Now, what I say is make sure that you've got your bucket of water. Look, it's an old Wix tub. Bucket of water, clean sponge. Keep your water fresh. Keep swapping it about. Make sure that you've got clean water all the time. I've started these ones here. I'm just working my way around. As I say, it's a living working kitchen. I've got a sheet where I'm working, but I'm not worried too much at the moment. I'm just moving stuff out of the way and moving it as and when I come to a unit. So these have all been cleaned down. I've got a bit of fine pad sandpaper because they're in a good condition. I only need to provide a key onto the surface. So washing it down and providing a key onto this means I'm good to go when it comes to painting. Now with it being previously painted in the modern eggshell, I'm not even going to undercoat it. It's just gonna go straight over because it's the same paint, same color. We're gonna go straight over with Farrow and Ball modern eggshell. So that's where we are. So let's stop there. Let's have a bit of a break. You know, one like, do, do, do. let's have some cheesy music. Oh, Google ads might stick in adverting, but we'll see. So I'll cover the lens and then we'll come back and talk about a cleaning process for getting ready for painting for a kitchen, because this is what you want to know about. Right, I'm back with you. You see pots and pans I'm going to move when I come to there, because if I move them all about, they're going to be in my way. So I'll move them as I come to them. I'm on these top units. I've done these ones here. I'm not doing the insides. All I've done is literally, I've washed them down on the inside. I won't be, re I won't be repainting those. So the outsides, I've got, I'll just show you what I've got. You know those fine wet and dry sandpaper pad sponge? They're lovely. It gives you a nice bit of a key because the key is your little scratches on the surface. So I've done that. Right, I want to show you how dirty kitchens can get. Now, the area that I'm in at the moment, let's look at the, look at the lens. The area I'm in at the moment is where the kettle is, and I'm near the utility, so the flow of air gets pushed, pushed through the, the kitchen. Now, if you can see this, I'm gonna get the flash. 
Talk, talk amongst yourselves. So there we are. It's dripping down. I'll start at the bottom and work up with the sandpaper. Just carefully rubbing it and starting from the bottom working up because I don't want loads of drips over the kitchen units. You see there, kitchen unit um, worktops. Right, working my way up now. Can you see how grubby this is going? You can see that, and even on the sides, just wipe that down. So I'm really giving it a good rub to clean it and also provide a key. Now we're going up and down. Just bring these cove pamphlets round at the top. Just giving it a key. You see what I'm doing? It's soaking up. And then just go down those angles like that, those grooves, up and down. I can see how much dirt's coming off. I'm going to change from here. I'm still with you. Got a clean sponge. I'm just going to wipe this down. Uh, if that's not dirty, I don't know what is. But this is why you clean down and preparation is the key. Everybody tells you prep. Got to do good prep. And particularly when we come into kitchens, you've got to prepare it well because there'll be grease in the air. I'm just wiping the wall units. I'm not I'm not painting the walls at this moment in time, all for the customer. We're just refreshing the kitchen unit. So these are all being nicely cleaned down. I've taken the handles off. The handles that can get off will be cleaned down and just washed and they'll go back on. The handles that can't get off because they're behind false panels, I'll just tape them up with a bit of um, Q1 tape, some delicate tape. So I'm just wiping these all down. Let's see what I'm doing there, wiping it down. So I'm filming on my phone today. I've not got my big camera for filming. Proper raw, raw video in. Washing it down. Really cleaning it down. Change your water regularly with your sponge. Change it as often as you can. Once you start seeing your, your water's going filthy, just wipe the wall down as well. Don't forget bottom edge there. That's been sanded. Now that, when that dries, will be lovely. And that is the principle of going round the kitchen for cleaning it down. The doors will be exactly the same. Now this is, you can see that. Can we focus on it? Round where the little knobs have been, they're dirty. And I'll just get the sponge just to show you how dirty that can be. Let me get there. No cleaner on it. This is just, just the water. Let's see how that's coming off already. That's before I've got any cleaner on it. See that, can't you? It's there, yeah, Why don't you talk. So what I'm doing is going around everything, top to bottom, just washing it all down. And then we'll come to painting it. So I wanna talk about brushes and paints next. I don't wanna go around showing you how to paint it because it's not that sort of video. This, this video is about preparation. And what I've done, all these top ones are done so far. You see around the, oh, the window. These top ones are all done. And then I'll be onto these bottom units here. And again, it's the same principle. I'm not doing the insides. See how dirty that is? Let me get that focusing a bit better. See how that dirty that is? That all comes off. I've left the screw in for the knob. I've got the knobs at the back up there and they'll go back on. But clean them down. I'm not doing the insides. I'm doing the edges and just the faces. And the faces will have two coats. The edges, because they're not bad, will probably just have one. But this is Farron Ball Modern Eggshell. And I have to say, other than a little bit of chipping around some of these knobs, it's not come off. And when I say this is a working kitchen, there's grandchildren coming in, there's kids coming in, and there's baking done at least once a week, proper cooking, and that's why it's dirty, but it's really stood up well. There's no grit primers gone on. It's Farron Ball's, well, a bit of light stroke, mid-tones undercoat has gone on all of this. A little bit of wear there. The doors, no chip in there. Just bring you around to where the dishwasher is. You just see a bit of chipping around there where fingers have caught it. These are, I don't want to take this panel off for the dishwasher because they're on those um, secret screws. 
it's just a refresh. I'm not looking at stripping the kitchen down. I'm not spraying it, it's gonna be brushed. So these will all be painted and I'll tape up these knobs and handles that I can't get off. So let's talk about my brushes in a minute. So I'll come back to you in a few seconds. Da -da -da, another bit of a da -da 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 cheesiness. When you're cleaning kitchens down, sometimes you want to take a door off. You'll go, Phil, how do you take a door off? Well, hopefully you've got a, a nice kitchen that's got quick release hinges. There's a little tab at the back of that hinge there. Now, if you just pull it towards you, that, well, push it. Sorry, it's not pull it towards you. If you just push it, it unclips. And then the back of that, you see that? Well, that bracket there unclips. The same with the top. Now, I'm holding a camera and I don't want to drop it, but they unclip and it lifts off. Now, if you haven't got these quick release kitchen brackets, it might be just a case of unscrewing a, a couple of screws at the side, one at the top, one at the bottom, and just lift them away. Or even you can unscrew, depending on what's easier. Obviously, work hard, work, work smarter, not harder. So, obviously, work. Make it easy for yourself. If it's easier to unscrew one, two, with the actual clips of the doors, people can do that. So if you've got, can you hear that quick release? Just pull it forward. That's snapped back in. If you want to take the door off, because you are painting the inside of the doors. God, look at the lens. If you are painting the inside of the doors, um, whip them off or unscrew them, and then you can get all the edges. And I'm reiterating, because I don't want somebody commenting, oh, you've not... You've not taken them off. It's it's not that sort of paint job on this kitchen. It's just literally a freshen up of top coating, the faces, two coats, and the edges round there. We'll just have one because it is the same colour that's going on. And there's a, another clean down door. So it is easy to do and anybody can do it. And I'm not using anything complicated. I'm just using some general kitchen cleaner, flash, my sandpaper sponge, which is probably only about a 120 if that, might be a 180, sanding pad and a sponge. Just wash it down, clean water and rinse it so you're not leaving any sediment on. So that's how you do it, just taking the door off. And that works with them all really. If you need to lift drawers out, just use your usual lifting the drawer out. But for this, we can do it with the doors on. So good, job's a good one. Right, you're going to say Phil. Phil Beck with the Professional Painter and Decorator, you're going to hand brush this, you're not going to spray it. I've got a link there to an HVLP, setting up an HVLP. That is ideal for spraying kitchens. You can use, obviously, airless, but HVLP, you've got a lot of control. So there's a link in that corner there for HVLP. So forget that, I'm doing brushing. Now you're going to say, Phil, what brushes are you going to use? Well, don't forget, you've got to have a duster brush just to dust any cobwebs off that you might have missed across the top. Duster brush. Right. My brushes of choice for this hand painting kitchen. Let's get me into my little line. Right, no sponsorship, there's nothing. These are from Crown Decorator Centre in Nottingham, the new branch that's on Lady Bay Bridge, West Bridgeford. Um, if you see Alex there, he can look after you with um, a decent price on brushes. No sponsorship, seriously, I have to buy these. Right, these are Arrowworthy, Arrowworthy brushes. Classic brush with the, I'm going to call it a nymph. It's, it's not nymph. Nymph bristle. Now, to me, when I look for a brush, I like a bristle that's like a flagged, you see that, I'm looking at it, flagged tip edge, bristle end. Very soft. Now, these brushes for water-based paints and doing stuff like this, where it's oh, brushing down are ideal. You get very little brush marks with it. And particularly if you get your paint too thick, you'll get more brush marks. And Farron Ball is one that is designed to show a little bit of brush mark when it's painting, because that's the idea. And apparently I've been told that uh, the Americans like Farron Ball to have brush marks in it because they don't like to see everything being sprayed. They like to be a bit different and go, we've got a painted finish by brush and by hand. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I've got two lots of these brushes. I've got the classic, straight flat and I've also got the classic sash so, oh, sash <laughs> call it slash you see the slash bristle there 
Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the smaller one, which is a, an inch and a half. And when I come to do these panels on the doors, because it's water based and it dries off quick, I don't want to see any flashing. I don't want to catch. I don't want to catch the, the molding and the inner panel with the outside, but we'll call it style rails. So what I'll be doing is I'll do it here. I can get it on the camera. I'll take my molding in first, all the way down and round across the top. Molding's all getting on. And then I'll do the, oh, I'm talking gibberish. I'll do the filling panel with a wider brush. Well, this is a, this is a two inch. I'll probably get a two and a half inch out. Do the main filling panel, cross crow's nest it, horizontal, work quickly, and then lay it off as quick as you can. Now, my idea is do the molding, do the molding, do the panel, go to another door, do the molding, do the panel, and let the first original molding and panel go off start, before I start bringing the, the top rail and bottom rail and side rails in. And you're gonna say, Phil, why are you doing that? Phil, why are you doing that? And it's because I don't want to catch any bristles on a wet edge, because you can get flashing, particularly when you've got um, an eggshell stroke satin finish. And if I can see slightly, I can't really see on here, but I could see previously where it was been painted. I could see some brush marks that had just caught panels that were just going off. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually do a molding, do a panel with the back edge of the brush, where if you get any paint on the face, I'll just knock it off so that can dry off. And then when it comes to the flats, I can follow it around. Now, the edges, I'll do the edges, then these. So are we all good with that? I think cleaning down a kitchen, dead easy. Just make sure you go around everything, clean water, wipe any of the flash sediment off because you don't want any of that. Shelves in there, they're all clean, wipe those down. Extractor hood, that was really filthy as you could imagine. A customer is even living with cake. It says help yourself to cake. So Madeira cake with jam. I'll have some of that in a bit. So they're all washed down and then we'll come to paint it. But today I'm talking about washing down. I'm not talking about painting the kitchen. That's for another day. And this is going to be hand painted. This is going to be hand painted by a brush not by a sprayer. So why are we 14, 15 minutes in? I'll leave you at that. I'm quite happy cleaning down and I'll come back to you on another video another time. Don't forget comments, press the bell, like, subscribe and um, see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to me.